Hi everyone, Miss Divikar here. I'm going to do a quick video on your smart music assignment for this week. So once you get to your uh, class, I would select this first one here as a warm-up. It's the one that pops up first for mine, but it's the one that starts with the number seven, seven rhythm charts in a musical context. Say OK, opening your title. And the first thing I notice um, is that on the directions it says that I need to submit line B and I need to turn it off when I record myself, turn off my part. So I'm going to show you how to do that. See this little slider right here that says my part? I'm just going to slide it all the way to silent so that I don't have to worry about listening to it. Um, I'm noticing that there are a lot of ties here and those can be really hard to count. So what I'm going to do first is just look at that top line and kind of go through and um, say out the counts. So one and three, one and and three, one and 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 one and 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 three and and you might want to count them, you might want to clap them. You know what, this, again, with the issue of not being able to write in smart music, that would be really hard for me because as a student, what I would have done would have been writing in all the counts here. Um, and so if you have the availability to do that, I would highly recommend it. So one thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, press the play button and perform this just on the G string, like that top line. Um, I'm just gonna perform it on one note and so that I can hear if those rhythms are correct. I'm gonna press play. And the nice thing about smart music, as much as there are problems with it, I like having the cursor there to kind of help you find those beats. Um, that was kind of fast for me, so I'm gonna try that again and uh, move that tempo marker. Not working so well with the bow in my hand. I'm gonna move it down to 100. I think that'll be easier for me to record. I'm gonna press play, just work on the rhythm. So I'm gonna try recording that, or just at least pressing play with the notes that I want. Actually, and I'm probably gonna pizzicato it, just to make sure that I've got it kinda of in my ear. One thing that I might do is just turn up the my part just a little so I can hear what it's supposed to sound like as I just press play. So that might be really helpful in kind of working through that. And I don't know if you can tell, but on line A, they were playing a B natural if you play violin and happen to have this part. So I'm gonna turn up my part, turn down my part now, not up, Oop, there we go, turn it down, and try that again just on my own with the cursor helping me with the notes. And once I feel comfortable with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the bow and record it. When I add the bow, honestly, I would probably press play again just to work on it before I record, but just to save some time, I'm gonna record it for you all. Okay. And then whenever that's ready, I'm gonna go ahead and listen to myself first. So press the blue play. And once I'm satisfied, I'm gonna go ahead and press submit. And you know, I could really use some rosin on my bow. So as I open up, well, as it's submitting and as I open up the next assignment, I'm gonna rosin my bow here a little. I've got this table set up with my clarinets and all my musical stuff and it's, there's a lot of stuff. All right, so I'm gonna close that submission, go back home, string orchestra, and click on the tray pack. Press start, press my instrument, grab some, oop, not viola, violin, grab some rosin. And as that's opening, top line please. All right, good to know. 
Ooh, so I see a double stop right there at the beginning. So I just want to make sure I know how to finger that. And honestly, if you have issues with playing two notes at once, double stops, I would go ahead and play the top note. So what I'm going to do first is listen to this by pressing play. Perfect. Okay, so as I listen to that, one thing that I notice is that there are some dynamics here. And what I might do if I had a pencil or had the ability to write things in is mark forte as 10 and mark pianissimo as one. So to make sure to make that difference between a scale of one to 10. So really quiet there on the pianissimo, really loud on the fortissimo. I see hooked bows, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. So everything is as it comes or um, just natural alternating of the bow until we get to those hooked bows, which are both up, up. Da, 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 sorry. Da, 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 da. So, and that's actually quite fast for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn down that metronome. Maybe to about here. Just for practice purposes. So I'm gonna start my cursor here at the top. And I'm gonna go through and just play this on a D string to make sure I've got that rhythm and that bowing. And um, if you feel ready to do it, I'm also gonna work through those dynamics. So using heavy, long, um, weighty bows at the forte and going maybe closer to the bridge and then closer to the fingerboard on those quieter parts. I'm going to press play. Ooh. Kind of got the hang of that rhythm and that bowing I'm gonna try and add the fingers maybe without the bow just so that I can work on that why there we go Especially those violinists if you notice something that I did incorrectly what I noticed is that so in this piece I need my third finger to be very high on the C sharp on the G string but it's a regular third finger on the D string and one thing that I'm noticing about my and also on the A string one thing that I'm noticing about myself as I play violin for the first time in a while is that once my fingers do something they tend to get stuck in that position so I need to make sure that after I play that C sharp that my finger goes back to just a regular um, a natural note on the other strings. So that's maybe just something to keep in mind if you play violin or if you play an instrument where you've got an extended, or a viola of course, or if you play an instrument where you've got an extended finger like on bass or cello or if you have to shift on bass, um, make sure that that only occurs for the one note with the accidental in it, not everything. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and record this, working on that bowing, working on those dynamics and making sure I have the notes. And I might turn up the tempo here. Um, assume that I've practiced this a little bit. I'm just gonna, there we go. Okay, for some reason it closes me out every time I need to record, so I'm gonna try that again. like we're not doing the second ending. So 
So um, it's just the first ending, which is a good thing to know. Um, it looks like it did not catch my double stops, which is kind of sad, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and listen. I kind of wish it allowed us to play the second inning, but that's okay. All right, so um, that's how I would go ahead and work on that. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, bye.